In this video, we're going to talk about uh, inverse functions, um, but before we can talk about inverse functions, we need to talk about the idea of whether or not a function uh, even has an inverse uh, to start. Um, that's where the idea of one-to-one -one comes into play. Uh, so we're going to discuss one-to-one uh, -one functions, um, and I, I do want to remind you that um, oftentimes I refer to functions as mappings. Uh, so in these three cases that we have outlined here in your notes, um, I'm going to construct the mappings uh, in the first example uh, from 1 to 4, uh, 2 to 4 is a mapping, 2 to 5 is a mapping, and 3 to 6 is a mapping. So again, we're, we're trying to determine if a function is uh, invertible, meaning if it has an inverse. Um, and an inverse uh, function is just a reverse mapping. So to get started, um, the first thing we have to discuss is whether or not the given mapping is actually a function. Um, so in this first case, you can actually see here that because 2 maps to 4 and 2 also maps to 5, that this is not even a function. Uh, if it's not a function, then therefore it is not one-to-one. -one. So not a function, therefore not one-to-one. -one. Okay? In the second mapping that we'll take a look at, maybe I'll draw one-to-four, uh, two-to-four, and three-to-five. So here, um, to, to have a discussion uh, whether or not uh, what we have is, is invertible, um, we would again need to make sure that the given uh, mapping is in fact a function. And it does look like it's a function. It looks like there's only one arrow coming out of every x, uh, so we have a unique mapping uh, and we do have a function. Um, so yes, this is a function. But to then create an inverse function, which is an, a reverse mapping, um, the 4 would need to map to the 1, the 4 would need to map to the 2, and the 5 would need to map to the 3. So if I simply change those arrows uh, like I have, then it's pretty evident that once again we don't have a function going in the, the opposite direction. Uh, we don't have that that one arrow, you got, you can't really see, I erased it, uh, that was there and that was there. You don't really have that one arrow coming out um, and, and, and creating that unique mapping. So you can see that what we started with was a function, um, but it is not going to be a one-to-one -one function, okay? In the last mapping, uh, maybe we'll take a one-to-five, a two-to-four, and a three-to-six. So similar conversation yes it's a function and if we change the direction to create that reverse mapping now you can also see that it satisfies the original definition of the function where only one arrow is coming out uh, creating that uniqueness um, so yes this would be a one-to-one -one function okay so, to, to have a conversation about one-to-one, -one, you first need to establish that it's a function. Then if we reverse the mapping, if it still remains a function, then yes, it is one-to-one. -one. Um, so, the inverse function, the notation f with that upper minus one represents the inverse function, uh, only exists if f is one to one. So the inverse only exists if f is one to one, only if I can reverse that order uh, of the mapping and it still remains a function uh, would the inverse exist. So now transitioning uh, into the next example where we're actually given a graph um, and we want to determine is this um, invertible or is this uh, one to one. Um, we'll take a look here and answer the, the couple questions. Um, first of all, in order for something uh, to be invertible, to find an inverse function, it's got to start off as a function. Um, and graphically, to determine that, we could look at the vertical line test. Um, take the vertical line, scan the function from left to right. You can see that it only intersects at, at most one point at a time. So it is a function, yes. <clears throat> um, in terms of one-to-one, 
Um, well, we haven't really discussed how to determine that other than through sets of ordered pairs. So uh, what I might encourage you to, to do is, is just take a look that this is y equals x squared. Um, and, and there's more specific points plotted on, in your notes. Um, but a couple of the ones worth noting uh, would be the point here at negative 1, 1 and 1, 1. So if you look at this, again, in terms of uh, sets of ordered pairs, my x value is negative 1, which maps to a y value of 1. My x value of positive 1 also maps to a y value of 1. So when we flip this, or if we were to flip this and try to create an inverse, um, we wouldn't have a function anymore. So you can see that this would not be uh, a one-to-one -one function. Now, graphically, uh, we have the vertical line test to determine if it's a function or not, and now you might be able to see you have a horizontal line test, HLT, horizontal line test, uh, to determine uh, if a function is one-to-one. -one. Um, so you can see that we have a function. It is not one-to-one, -one, uh, and in terms of the Y, it's pretty evident that if you reverse the mapping, you, don't, you no longer have a function. All right, so we've, we've taken care of sets of ordered pairs, uh, determining one-to-oneness, um, graphs, uh, and now we'll take a look at uh, given equations. Um, and this is, this is certainly the most difficult um, a way to determine if something is one-to-one, -one, but it's also the most common way. Uh, you're more likely to be given a, an equation uh, than you are potentially a graph or a sets of ordered pairs. So um, this is an important uh, concept to use. So there's a, an algebraic test for one-to-oneness that says take the function evaluated at A, set it equal to the function evaluated at B. You would simplify that down, and if A ends up equaling B, then F is one-to-one -one and therefore invertible, meaning the inverse exists. So uh, the example that we'll take a look at here is a rational function, x minus 2 over x plus 3. And we're to determine if this is uh, 1 to 1. Um, we can clearly see that it's a function by the notation. Uh, and so the 1 to 1 test now says take the function evaluated at A, set it equal to the function evaluated at B. Now we need to simplify. So we'll cross multiply. A minus 2 times B plus 3 equals B minus 2 times A plus 3. Now we've got some uh, multiplication here. We end up with an AB plus 3A minus 2B minus 6 equals an AB plus 3B minus 2A minus 6. Uh, conveniently, a fair amount of this stuff zeroes out. And then to combine like terms, um, I guess I'll go ahead and move everything in a direction that the coefficients stay positive. Now that's, that's just a personal preference. You can do what you want here. Um, but if I move the a's to the left, that gives me a 5a. If I move the b's to the right, that gives me a 5b. When I divide by 5, I do in fact end up with a equals b. Since I ended up with a equals b, um, I can say that yes, f is one-to-one -one, uh, and has an inverse.